What's up, guys? This is Zero, and we're doing another episode of Kerbal Space Program, and we're continuing our lathe-bound mission. Right now, in, uh, what you're looking at is this is our engine part that's going to be transferring us to the Joule system. Um, got a couple nuclear engines on here, some monorail propellant, but uh, we're going to basically uh, get rid of this bottom stage here and then attach it to our fuel section of the ship. Um, I previously launched this ship and uh, I didn't put uh, solar panels on it, so I was literally about to intercept the other half and my battery died and I flew right past it. So, yeah, that's why we're putting solar panels on this. <laughs> but all around, I know that this ship can and has the ability to make it into orbit and intercept with our fuel section. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, if you notice, uh, we're using the new um, the new parts that came with the ARM update. Uh, so the ones that they made with NASA. We got some liquid fuel boosters on the side there. And um, right now I'm just making it a little bit more sturdy because when I launched it previously, it flexed like crazy. Uh, only because I didn't have any structural... Uh, parts to it whatsoever so it was kind of yeah well here we go we're gonna launch it and thanks to like four four times normal speed or greater um, it's not gonna take too long to get up into orbit here but yeah look at that pretty looks great going up pretty fast um, so yeah so so the idea here is that we're gonna just get this into space and we're just gonna rendezvous with the other part uh, seamlessly goes into orbit. Start our gravity turn here, bringing it over. Nothing that you haven't seen a million times before. If you watch any other videos on Kerbal Space Program, getting into orbit's pretty simple. Uh, so right now we're just going to increase our app laps to about 130, I think, something around there, just higher than when our thing is orbiting. I think our, I believe our other half is orbiting at 85,000. Or something thereabouts um, so yeah now we're just gonna raise our peri apps just so that we have a circularized orbit and then it's off to time acceleration so that our other half can catch up with us because we are traveling slower than that other part so you're gonna stage here and spin around I don't know why it's spun but uh, that's not the first time or the last time things will be spinning in this episode so, yeah, we're just super time accelerate because nothing is more exciting than watching the map view. So now we're going to lower our peri apps just so that we get an intercept with this thing. There we go. Just me tweaking nodes, and it, I believe at some point it's just like, yeah, it's not going to work. So I delete the node and start all over again because I couldn't get it close enough. Um, so we just we started over again. We get the node right about 2.2 meters away 2.2 K 2.2 kilometers away from our uh, from our vehicle so we're waiting for it to intercept and then we are slowing down to ro uh, lower our Apple apps so that we are in a matched orbit with the thing that we're trying to rendezvous with so now you can see it there 2.2 kilometers away and now we're just gonna aim our ship at it we're going to match our two nav ball units there um, so that they're facing each other so that by uh, by time we intercept it we'll uh, actually fly either right into it or right past it so you see me pushing that uh, pink node right under the yellow one and that means we're gonna basically run right into it so five point something meters a second towards our target is not fast enough for me so I'm gonna go a little bit faster and then time accelerate to our thing and if you look below us, we can see the Kerbal Space Center uh, flying right below us right now. And we're just going to speed past it. I do apologize for this being a night side rendezvous. However, the Lathe 1 station does have plenty of lights on it, so we will be able to see some of what is going on. So here we go, 500 meters away. Now we can see the beautiful station. If you notice, it is slightly different than the one that I had previously uh, launched it's because with the new update I didn't bother uh, updating the file I just 
remade the ship and launched it again. So basically this has a few more docking ports and some Gigantor solar panels on it. Um, so this is me being a noob, not really knowing exactly how to finagle these nodes so that I head towards it. Uh, so yeah, that that's basically what's going on here. And if you notice, at some point, you're going to see the Lave 1 station flailing about in some crazy spin. I th either they did something with the update so that it retains rotation even through time acceleration because it is just spinning around uncontrollably for no discernible reason whatsoever. Uh, so we're going to switch over to that and stop the crazy rotation as we get closer and closer to our uh, docking procedure. Because the la I would give props to anyone that could dock with something that is rotating that yeah, that fast. So we're just trying to get a little bit closer. We're getting in within 100 meters of our target, or at least 150. And we're looking out so that we don't smash right into it as it flails about in carbon orbit. 50, 80, 90... And we switch to stop this ridiculous rotation. Turn SAS on. And... Or not. I thought we did for some reason. But now we're just going to switch over here and uh, detach our transfer vehicle stage. Our extra fuel. We don't need it anymore. We just need to attach the engines to the top of this fuel section. So we're going to undock and spin away from our thing. Because that's how we undock now. And we are just going to use the onboard RCS and monopropellant to get the rest of this job done. We're just going to scoot on over there. Uh, it takes a few tries for me to get it over there, but I do get it within a decent amount of time. It doesn't take forever. The first time I did this, like I said, we didn't have any power, so the batteries died really quick, and I just either I just flew right past it, so there was no way I was going to... The dock and see it picked up some rotation again for some reason so here I go now I turned on SAS and now it will retain that ro that um, still not moving rotation this is where I'm looking around for the thing and I don't see it anywhere um, because I didn't put lights on the engine part but that's why we have lights on the lathe one station so that we don't have to worry about seeing it it's got plenty of batteries plenty of power so we'll be able to see that for a long time just scooting this thing over here using our RCS, 2.5 meters a second. Get pretty close the first try. This is actually one of the smoothest docking procedures that I've done. Uh, it's still, you can see using RCS over there to stop its rotation for whatever reason. I hope that doesn't give us any issues when we're actually trying to get it into uh, to jewel and then to lathe, but yeah, so I, I put some extra docking ports on this station so that we can maybe attach some, I don't know, maybe some SSTOs or something that we can fly around the planet. That would be pretty cool. I know the other side of this, if you notice, I have two giant docking ports, one of which this attaches to, and the other one I'm going to attach to the landing system. I have a two-stage lander. Uh, one drops a small pod, and the other one drops a larger lander. But they're all going to land in relatively the same spot. Uh, but I just wanted to land two things for some reason and then just smack them together. So one's going to be a really light lander and one's going to be a relatively heavy one. I noticed at this point that I could just rotate this guy. And it's almost a perfect docking right there. So our guy is basically not moving towards the other one. So all I have to do is just translate it a little bit. I noticed the rotation slightly off, so I rotate it just enough before the magnetic docking ports kick in. And there we go. Perfect. Our engine's exhaust is no longer going to hit our gigantic um, solar panels. And that's basically that. Um, we're going to continue to add on to this before we send it out to the Joule system and then on to lathe. But that's going to be it for this episode. We, like I said, we're going to continue working on that. So don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode.